This talk is about high throughput Byzantine consensus on networks with variable bandwidths. This is a joint work with my, adv uh, my advisor, Mohamed Alezadeh, and uh, my amazing collaborators, Sujin Park at MIT, Siram Kanan at University of Washington, and David Xie at Stanford. Abstractly, consensus is the problem of making a bunch of servers to agree on and output the same value. But in this work, we mean something more concrete. We want the servers to agree on an append-only log. Each server has a local copy of the log, and any server could propose some new content, which we call transactions, to be appended to, be appended to the log. For example, different servers could each propose something, and our goal is to let all servers to append them to the local copies in the same order, so, so that their copies remain identical. This is what we mean by consensus in this work. Such an append-only log is useful for state machine replication, cryptocurrency, smart contract, and etc. There are different types of consensus for different applications. For example, you have protocols like Raft and Paxos. These are designed to run on a small network, and you trust that each server can at most crash. On the other hand, there's this new application called blockchains, where you have little trust on individual servers. So it needs to tolerate Byzantine faults, or arbitrary behavior of the 40 servers. This is what we focus on in this work. You might think that there are so many BFT consensus protocols already, so what's new here? It turns out that a blockchain or a cryptocurrency usually involves servers across the public internet. This is quite different from the usual BFT consensus scenarios, which are data centers or well-provisioned ones. The main challenge brought by the internet is bandwidth variability both across different locations and across time. To see why variability poses a challenge, we need to understand the construction of a BFT protocol. BFT protocols operate in epics. Each epic atomically appends a new batch of transactions to the log. There are two phases in an epic, a broadcast phase and an agreement phase. In the broadcast phase, a batch of transactions, which we call block, is proposed, and everyone downloads the block. Then in the agreement phase, nodes exchange votes to decide if they're going to append that block. In particular, the agreement phase requires votes from at least two thirds of the nodes in order to finish. After reaching agreement, nodes unanimously append the block to their local copies of the log and the protocol enters the next epoch. From a networking standpoint, the broadcast phase requires nodes to download a large amount of data and is bandwidth sensitive. The agreement phase, however, only involves a few rounds of short messages and is latency sensitive. The key takeaway is that agreement requires at least two thirds of the nodes to vote, which in turn requires two thirds of the nodes to finish downloading the block. This is not a critical path for nodes to enter a new epic and bounce the system throughput. Because the internet bandwidth varies across locations, and recall that block download is bandwidth bottlenecked, different nodes will take different amount of time to download the new block. In every epoch, there will be a node which provides the last vote of the two thirds that we need to finish agreement. No one could finish the epoch earlier than this node because there wouldn't be enough votes for, for agreement. As a result, this node is the bottleneck of that epic. Its bandwidth limits the throughput of the system during that epic because the epic can only finish after it has downloaded the block. This limit could be much lower than the average bandwidth of the nodes. Any node that has a faster connection than the bottleneck will need to wait and will underutilize its bandwidth. Our goal is to remove such bottlenecks. Specifically, we ask, can we design a consensus protocol that achieves good throughput even under significant bandwidth variations? If we want to achieve that, we must move block download off the critical path. Otherwise, bandwidth variability will always create straggler nodes and bottleneck the system throughput. This means that the consensus protocol must allow nodes to propose new blocks without downloading existing ones. Is it possible? Apparently, the nodes must agree on the ordering of new blocks. Our key observation is that they do not need to first download the blocks. Instead, they only need to agree on the hashes of the blocks. The node proposing a block should broadcast its hash instead of the block itself. 
because the hashes are small, even nodes with low bandwidth can receive them quickly, so no one is a straggler. In the agreement phase, the nodes agree that they are going to append a block with that hash to the log. Then each node can go and download the corresponding block independently. Nodes with low bandwidth will still spend a long time downloading, but they will not block the fast nodes. On the other hand, the fast nodes can append the block as soon as they download it, because they know the slow nodes have agreed to append the block with that hash, so the resulting log will be consistent. Sadly, there's a problem. The node proposing the block could be malicious and may refuse to provide the block when a node tries to download it. No one else has the block either. They only have the hash. The append-only log will stop growing because of a missing block, and the system loses liveness. This problem shows that learning the hash alone is not enough for nodes to safely agree to append, to append a block. The hash does protect the consistency of the log, meaning that nodes will not append blocks with different hashes, but it does not protect the liveness, as we just saw. Instead, we observe that nodes must confirm that the block corresponding to the hash is available for download. We call this property the data availability of the block. This ensures that nodes can always obtain the block that they have agreed to append. This leads to our key insight. Nodes in a BFT consensus protocol perform two jobs, agreeing on the ordering of blocks and downloading the blocks. In particular, block download is not required for consensus and each node can download at their own pace. However, to ensure the blocks are available for download, nodes must confirm the data availability of the proposed blocks. Existing protocols run broadcast and agreement in lock steps. The broadcast phase couples data availability with block download, but such coupling is not necessary and forces nodes to download blocks in a critical path, which hurts the system's throughput when facing bandwidth variability. Our key idea is to decouple the broadcast phase into data availability and block download. The former is critical for consensus, so it runs in lock steps with the agreement. The latter is not required for consensus, so we can move it out of the critical path. The main question is now, how do we efficiently ensure data availability? The solution is erasure code. We can, decode the block, we can encode the block into multiple chunks, and erasure code guarantees that we can recover the block with any sufficiently large subset of the chunks. We give each node a chunk, and we know the block is available after enough nodes download their chunks. Here, the size of each chunk is on the order of b over n, where b is the block size and n is the number of nodes. So even slow nodes can finish this step quickly. Note that at this point, no one has the actual block, but because of the erasure code, we know that if someone later wants the block, it can go and ask enough nodes to collect enough chunks and then recover the block. It turns out that there's a primitive called verifiable information dispersal, or VID in short, in the distributed computing community that implements this idea. But before we borrow the protocol, we notice that the state-of-the-art VID protocol actually has an extra per node cost of order n squared. The cost is for nodes to make sure the encoding itself was done correctly. This extra cost actually turns out to be problematic for us. Here we fix the block size to one megabyte and plot the amount of data that each node needs to download under different schemes. First, we have broadcast. Each node downloads the whole block, so it's always one megabyte. Then we have the state-of-the-art VID protocol, AVID-FP. Observe that initially, when there are more nodes, each node has to download a smaller chunk, so the curve goes down. However, as we add even more nodes, the n squared component kicks in and the curve goes up. When there are more than 120 nodes, each node has to download more than one megabyte of data running AVID FP. So there's no saving at all after that point. We improve upon AVID FP and reduce the actual communication from n squared to n. The protocol is called AVID M. There's full detail in the paper, but our key insight is that nodes do not need to verify if the chunks were correctly encoded, as they do in AVIDFP. Instead, they can defer the check to individual nodes as they try to recover the block 
because they will independently reach the same conclusion about the correctness of the encoding. This figure shows that AVIDM allows each node to download much less data compared to the other schemes. Our improvement allows us to guarantee data availability with low per node cost. Let's now summarize our approach. We first replace the bandwidth intensive block download with AVIDM to ensure data availability. Because the per node cost of AVIDM is low, even slow nodes will finish quickly. Nodes then proceed directly to the agreement phase. After that finishes, nodes download the blocks asynchronously using whatever bandwidth they have. Now that block download is out of the critical path, slow nodes will never bottleneck the fast nodes, even if there are several epics behind, because they can always participate in AVIDM and their agreement. We applied our idea on an existing BFT protocol called Honey Badger, and we call our new protocol Dispersed Ledger. We implemented it in 8,000 lines of Go and tested it in three scenarios. A test bed with synthetic bandwidth and delay, 16 nodes on AWS, and 15 nodes on virtual, a low-cost low cloud provider. In this talk, I'll focus on the results from AWS. First, let's see some traces of Honey Badger and Dispersed Ledger. The x-axis is time, and the y-axis is the amount of data a node has appended to its local copy of the log. It's basically the progress of a node. Each curve represents one node, and we have 16 nodes in different, in different cities. The dotted curves we have are for Honey Badger. We can see that the curves are very close to each other. This is because in every epoch, all nodes have to wait for the slowest nodes to finish downloading. So they finish an epic almost synchronously. Next, we have dispersed ledger in solid curves. We can clearly see that the progress of the nodes are decoupled because the curves are further apart. One interesting, to, one interesting thing to notice is that every server makes more progress in dispersed ledger than all servers in Honey Badger. In other words, there's no such thing like a constantly slow node. Otherwise, we would have at least seen one solid curve that aligns with the dotted curves. Instead, we see that Honey Badger is troubled by temporal variability. The slow nodes could vary epic by epic, but in any epic, Honey Badger is bottlenecked by the slow nodes at that particular moment. In comparison, Dispersed Ledger absorbs this variability by enabling nodes to lag behind and catch up later when their bandwidth recovers. It becomes clear if we highlight one of the curves. Notice that this node had the least progress initially, but it quickly caught up towards the end. Here's the throughput measurement. Each bar is one node, and we see that dispersed ledger provides 2x better throughput than Honey Badger. And here's the latency result. We gradually increase the load on the x-axis and measure the median latency on the y-axis. The dotted curves are Honey Badger nodes, and the solid curves are dispersed ledger nodes. Let's zoom into one node. For example, this node in Ohio. Dispersed ledger reduces the latency by 74%. This is because block download is on the critical path of Honey Badger. So the epic interval is at least linear to the block size. When a load increases, blocks become bigger. So the epic interval becomes longer. In comparison, the epic interval in dispersed ledger remains stable because AVIDM is not sensitive to block size. It is more apparent if we look at the arrow bars that show the 95th percentile. Dispersed ledger has consistently low latency because the epic interval is stable. This is not the case with Honey Badger. We can observe the same benefit in other nodes. For example, we found that this data center in Mumbai is not as well connected. This node fails to keep up at a smaller load, but we still see the consistently low latency when it is not overloaded. So to recap, First, we proposed a method to make existing BFT consensus protocols adaptive to fluctuating bandwidth. Our key insight is that existing protocols couples two steps together, confirming the availability of blocks and delivering the blocks. We identified that the former is critical to consensus, but the latter is not. So by decoupling the two, we can move block delivery out of the critical path. Second, we have a new state-of-the-art BID algorithm that enables our vision. Third, we proposed a fix of the censorship problem in Honey Badger and similarly constructed protocols. This was not discussed in the talk, but we have full detail in the paper. 
And uh, finally, the dispersed ledger protocol and its implementation that achieves 2x better throughput and 74% lower latency than Honey Badger on the AWS testbed. Thanks, and uh, I can take questions.